the moment that we got this vibe that he's going to retire and he was very like and and again this is part of a broader plan it's part of a broader business model and that's fine you either have a plan or you don't the kelsey's have a plan all of them mama kelsey jason kelsey travis kelsey they have agents they have managers they have pr directors and that's fine my point is there's a plan when he's going to let us all know that he's retired and he's going to let us know what he's going to do next and i fully expect him to land in the amazon booth between kirk herb street and al michaels and until someone tells me differently that's my assumption because he did it last year during the bye week. They did the Kelsey documentary with Amazon. The relationship's already there. It would enhance the broadcast. It would be a nice little twist on what they've been doing. It already has worked. Al was happy and smiling when Jason Kelsey was in the booth, even though I don't think at this point in his life, like he's reached his lifetime limit of three-man booth. But I think he'll make the exception for Jason Kelsey or they'll just tell Kirk, you know, yeah. stick with college and we'll bring in Jason Kelsey in your place. But I think that's where he's going to be. If I had to lay odds for Jason Kelsey's 2024 destination, the only option in negative territory for me would be Kelsey on the Amazon broadcast for Thursday Night Football. Yeah, I think he's going to be very good at it, Mike, wherever he goes. I would rather probably see him in the booth than, than in the studio. I, I just I think he'd be very good at 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 it. I mean, he's a great – and when you see him in interviews, I've interviewed him a couple times. He's fantastic. Like, most offensive linemen are, but I think he is beyond that because most our offensive linemen are very smart. People don't realize that, but they are. And so he's one of those guys that you want to talk to. And you gravitate to in a locker room. So I want to see more Jason Kelsey. I would love to see him on whatever broadcast we're going to see him on. And, and I just think he'll be fantastic at it. And I've been wrong. Like, I, I thought Romo was going to be really bad. And he came in in that first year. He was really good. I thought, you know, Emmett Smith might be, or J- Jason Witten probably more than Emmett Smith, would be pretty good because he was so good in interviews. He didn't last very long at ESPN. So I've been wrong about it. But Jason Kelsey just feels good to me about how good he would be in the booth. I, I just think he'd be fantastic. And, you know, on that point, since we got some time to kill today because there really isn't a whole lot of news going on, and we'll get to it soon. I ran into Sandy Montag on the field before the Lions Bucks game and talked to him for a little while. He's the agent that represented John Madden. And I told him that I was just having the conversation the night before with an NBC executive about game analysts because I was asked, you know, who, what do you think of whoever? And I said, in my mind, in my mind, it goes John Madden and everybody else. And there's nobody else that's so bad that you just turn off the TV when you turn on a game. Greg Gumbel made that point a couple of years ago when we were in the middle of the the whole announcer roulette and this person's going here and that person's going there. Greg Gumbel said somewhere in some interview, podcast, or whatever, no one's tuning in to watch a game because so-and-so is in the booth. Now, you may turn it off, (laughs) but there aren't many that that you, you would regard as appointment viewing. There are none. John Madden was the only one. And that's what I said to Sandy Montag. It was John Madden and everybody else. And my point here is, could Jason Kelsey develop into a character like that? And, you know, John Madden was so smart, he was able to take his understanding of the game and instantly boil it into sound bites that the average person who doesn't know anything about the intricacies of football could understand. And it made the game feel more inclusive, not alienating. That's the challenge for the people in the broadcast booth. You have to come up with 5 to 15 seconds of commentary that is not alienating or, you know, you're trying to show how smart you are. The people who are truly the smartest don't feel compelled to make everyone know how smart we are and talk about double-A gap blitzes and crossing the face and all the different little terms that if you really aren't a closely watching football aficionado, you're kind of like, what's that? What? 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 I don't understand that. I thought I understood this game. What's he talking about? What's all this jargon? You got to be able to strip the jargon out. And Jason Kelsey, given his years of playing offensive line, would be able to, I think, 
if he can do it, and again, this is a skill that I'm sure at this point he doesn't even know that he possesses, if he does. But if he could take the <clears throat> details and complexities of line play and make that something that the average person yeah. could understand in 5 to 15 second chunks, that would put him closer to Madden than everybody else. Have we had an offensive lineman who's been really good at TV? Like, none come to mind right – I'm sure there has been, but none come to mind right away. And, you know, maybe it's because they're not really the face of the NFL, the face of a team or whatever, but they are some of the best interviews in a locker room ever. They're great – most of them are great talkers. Tyron Smith comes to mind as one who is not and doesn't like doing it. But most of them are really, really good at it. And, and I think most of them would be really good at TV. And he's one, because of that, I, I just think he, he has that, I agree with you, to, to kind of break down the game so you, you understand it as a fan, even if you aren't a big fan of the game, you don't know the intricacies of the game. You can break that down and simplify it. But yet, at the same time, explain what's going on and why this happened. And and I, offensive linemen, because of that, I think would be great at really breaking down that game, Mike. And he, in particular, being a center, obviously has all the calls to make on the offensive line, and it's done that for a really long time and played for a really long time and been really good at it for a really long time. So I think all of those things would make him a, a really good broadcaster if that's something that he wants to do. I think part of it is the personality of the offensive lineman. Yeah. This is something Sims and I have talked about. The offensive lineman is wired in a certain way that he does not seek attention. He does not want the spotlight. He understands he has a role that when things are going well, there will be less attention paid to him. Unless he's blocking guys into the front row of the stadium, you're not going to notice him. <laughs> I'm reminded of Bill Fralick. That was the guy that, yeah. About that time, we became aware of the pancake block back in the 80s, the huge tackle from Pitt who went on, I believe, to play for the Falcons. He's now no longer with us. But the pancake yeah. block was a thing for a while. You don't hear about the pancake block much anymore because they're not doing a lot of pancaking out there. It's just fending off the defensive linemen who generally are bigger, faster, and stronger than the offensive linemen, so they got their hands full. They're the ones trying to avoid being pancaked by the defensive linemen. But most offensive linemen – they're wired in a way that they're not out there. They're not gregarious in the public eye. They're gregarious in the locker room and around each other. But it's almost like it's part of the code that you don't stand out. Jason Kelsey has earned a dispensation to the don't stand out, no sudden movements, keep your shirt on. You know, And we'll see him from time to time like at a hockey game chugging beers. Like the Tennessee Titans lineman. Hey, there's a yeah. segue into what we're supposed to be talking about. But remember that when the Nashville Predators were doing well, they're, they're – you know, d dumping beer down their gullets. And we've got the David Bakhtiari, remember we, when he was chugging a beer when Aaron Rodgers couldn't. But but still, you're right. I, I think that, like, Nick Mangold was trying to do some stuff in the media at one yeah. point, and I don't know, like, I don't really see him or hear him, so I guess he's not anymore. Ross Tucker's been in the media for a long time. He was an offensive lineman for the better part of a decade. So there are some, but they're not many. It's a rare commodity and Kelsey, I think he's got the personality, he's got the charisma, he's got the knowledge, he's got the intelligence. He's going to have the platform somewhere, and he's got the potential to be great. Let's see what happens. But we'll get the formal announcement that he's retired at some point. But until then, he's going to live life and live at large, AFC Championship, and possibly beyond that, Las Vegas for Super Bowl 58, if the Chiefs upend the Ravens on Sunday at M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.